Uh, I'm Rob Kaufman. I will share my screen in just a moment and we will dive in. Uh, I work for SoftServe. I know that none of you guys have heard that word at all in the last two days, um, but I'm really excited to be presenting with you, for you today. Let's see if I can get this to do what it's supposed to do. There we go. That one's good. And then kill my video. And hit the green button. There we go. Do we see a presentation? Uh, yes, you do, Rob. Great. My pronouns are he, him. Um, I highly encourage that if you have questions throughout, that you ask them in the um, Slack channel. Um, my awesome coworker, Larita, is watching that and she will feed me direct questions so I don't get too distracted by the chatter uh, while I talk, but I do like to do questions as I go. So I divided my talk into essentially two parts. One, it's about the actual deployment or running of a Haiku application. And two, that's a little bit about some necessary workarounds today to deal with the fact that not perfectly everything is customizable. Our fundamental goal is that Haiku will be um, essentially as turnkey as possible. And as with any turnkey solution, there are always um, sort of steps to get there. So I know we talk a lot about the fact that Haiku is multi-tenant, but to me, that's not actually the most important thing about Haiku. The most important thing about Haiku is that it is a car you can get a set of keys on for and just drive. You don't have to build the car. It doesn't come in a bunch of boxes. Um, that's something that is you know, fundamentally supposed to be as turnkey as possible. So we currently support a few ways of running Haiku, and these are the most directly supported um, if any one of these were to not work, it would be absolutely considered a bug um, by myself, who's acting currently as the product owner, and um, by the, the Haiku community. So the first is running locally via Docker Compose. Um, the second is on a staging server or a single server using the Docker Compose production.yaml file. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between those two files. Um, and the third is in Kubernetes um, via Helm Deploy. And then you can fundamentally run uh, Haiku any way you could run any other Hyrax or Rails application. You would need Solar, you need Fedora, you need Redis, you need a database, uh, it could be MySQL, it could be Postgres, it could be Oracle if you were so inclined. You could run it on a Microsoft SQL database if you, you know, want to do that kind of thing. So you have options there. Um, but the first three are really the ones that we kind of like fundamentally work to smooth the path on in a regular basis. Um, so those are our, kind of our goals for deployment. Let's take a quick tour uh, of what those kind of look like in broad strokes. I'm not going to teach you Docker today. Um, there are lots of awesome resources for that kind of thing. Um, but essentially, a Docker Compose file is a YAML file that defines how an application should uh, run on your local machine. So it tells the Docker engine, hey, run these containers in this configuration and connect them together. It's made up of volumes, which are essentially disk spaces, networks, and services, which are kind of the important part. So in order to start the Haiku stack, we need a copy of Zookeeper. We need a copy of Solar Cloud. We need a copy of Fedora. We need a copy of Postgres. Uh, again, you can swap out for other databases as you see fit. Postgres is just the default. We need a web process, which is the actual running Rails application. We need a worker, which is uh, the background tasks. By default, that's Sidekick, um, though we have found good job to be an excellent uh, alternative to Sidekick. Um, and then it does a few little startup things. So as it's starting up, it makes sure that the directories that need to be written to by the running application are uh, writable. And then it runs, make sure that the solar configuration has been run. So it preloads your um, solar uh, config set and then creates a solar core. And then finally runs the DB migrate and DB seeds for you. Um, this is set up to short circuit. So if those things already have been run, it will like respond very quickly and we run Redis. For dev mode only, we also run a copy of the Selenium Chrome 
uh, uh, container. And that container is used for testing. So when you are running um, uh, feature specs and actually using a browser, so feature specs with JavaScript activity, they need a browser to run in. When you're in the containers, you can't necessarily easily reach out to your computer to run them. So we run this Chrome container that it can talk to. It gives you a nice uniform setup. You don't have to install special uh, applications on your computer. If you don't have Chrome installed on your computer, it doesn't prevent you from running the tests. It allows you to run all the tests. One neat thing about this is if you have uh, this Docker Compose running, you can, and you use a tool called Dory, which we use to run lots of different applications at the same time. Um, you can go to chrome.haiku.test, port 7900, and you will actually see a in-browser VNC view of the, of the Chrome browser running. So I can watch the tests actually happen. I can put a debug statement in and see the running browser stopped at that location, which is extremely helpful for debugging these kinds of feature specs, which can be particularly tricky to write well. OK, so the way we run this is essentially we run Docker Compose up web. And that will start all of these various processes. It made all my empty volumes, and it's going to create those containers. We're not going to sit here and watch it start because it takes a few minutes to get everything up and running the first time. One of the reasons I type up web and not just up here is that that starts web and all of the processes it depends on. That means I can stop web and restart it again without restarting Fedora or Solar or Redis or the DB, which speeds up the um, if you need to restart the Rails application. So one of those little development hacks. So that's what running in development looks like. The next thing I want to talk about is what does running in production look like and how is it different? So if we're running on a single box, um, we can also use Docker Compose. Um, let's say we make a fairly large EC2 instance, or maybe we have some VMware servers provisioned. And a lot of this is going to look very much the same. The volumes are the same. The network is the same. But one of the things that's fundamentally different, and I'm going to open them so we can look at them side by side, Okay, so on this side, which is my left side, I have the one we looked at first, um, which is the one for local dev. And on this side, we have the production version. So let's go down to where the web is defined here. And we'll see that these look essentially identical. That's awesome. But if we go back up to the top where we see this star app points to, we'll see that on the development side, we uh, have the information for building the Docker image. So in Docker, you use a Docker file to create a Docker image, and then that gets instantiated as a container to actually run. But in production, we don't want to build the image. We want the image to already be built. So we just use the image tag and we don't have the build context um, so that we're not trying to build uh, in our production environment. The other thing that's a critical difference here in the production-like environment is some of these variables have slightly different values that are more production ready. The most important of which, uh, the most important of which is this um, FC repo one. So in development, we use FC repo running on the file simple mode shape. It is really, really important that you not run file simple in production. If you do, eventually your Fedora instance will become irreparably corrupted. And that's bad. So in production, you want to be pointing at either a MySQL database or Postgres database. And the configuration uh, for that is here. Um, so that's, you know, I think a really crucial piece of the puzzle. I'm a little, you know, if we were doing Fedora 4 over again, we wouldn't, but if we had to, uh, I would definitely say like not making file simple, the default would be a really good idea, um, simply because it's so dangerous if you do accidentally run it in production. All right. So that's the production Docker compose file. Often, uh, on a production server, I'll write an alias. 
that looks kind of like this alias dc equals docker compose dash f docker compose dot production yaml and that's just because i'm lazy and i don't want to have to type dash f docker compose production yaml over and over again um, and that i've gotten pretty used to having dc be my docker compose alias this does write over uh, an existing unix tool um, but it's the one for text-based spreadsheets on the command line, which I don't personally use very often. So um, that's just sort of how we generally set up if we're running on a single machine. The next piece that I want to talk about is running in Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes deployment uh, sort of assumes that you have a Kubernetes cluster that you're running. There is no way that I have time to cover that in the next you know 15 minutes. So I'm just sort of that's going to have to be outside the scope of this talk. Um, but the way we deploy our um, in Kubernetes is essentially a three-part process. You need um, the script that sets up the Helm arguments, because quite frankly, I'm not typing Helm, upgrade, install, automatic, timeout, set these variables, add my extra args. This is the namespace, create namespace. This is the release name and Hyrax over and over again. I definitely want that to be in a shell script. And this script is provided in the Haiku repository in bin Helm deploy. Then the next piece, oops, got a little fast there, is your um, is the like piece to actually deploy it. Um, and so what this is, is a snippet of a GitHub action that we use for that. It says to set the values for the Helm deployment to demo deploy.yaml in this case. Uh, we use this to distinguish between staging, demo, production type environments. Uh, we start with the template file and we substitute the environment. So I'm going to show you one of these dash deploy template.yaml files and show you how they uh, substitute. There's a little hacky trick here where we set dollar equal to dollar, and I'll show you that and why that works. Uh, and then lastly, here are some environment variables. And then here's where we call bin helm deploy. This one will be Rob's haiku and Haiku demo. So again, we usually have these as a GitHub action. Um, and then lastly, there is the chart itself and its values file. So let's look at the chart. Uh, this chart is essentially a set of YAML files that are templates that get used by the Helm command line tool to um, tell the Kubernetes cluster, this is what I want my application to look like. Uh, Helm is a very, very common deployment method in Kubernetes land. Um, and we specifically point to and use the Hyrax Helm chart for deploying the Haiku. This means that any maintenance that the Haiku team puts in to maintaining the chart and deployment goes straight into Hyrax for everyone to use. Um, it doesn't really cause a lot of difference because Haiku is essentially just a Hyrax uh, application. And so, you know, one uniform set of deployment tools means that we're not maintaining two separate deployments. Um, and then the last piece of this puzzle is the values file. Uh, let me pull open the staging one of those. Um, so one little trick we do, and I'll show you here first, is this msubst. msubst is a command line Unix tool that is fairly old that basically reads in any file and replaces any environment variables with their values. So for example, I can pass base URL, in, uh, is that set in my environment, this gets filled in with the value from the outside. What this ultimately means is I can set this at my CI level or on my local machine, and these values get kind of filled in as we go. You can see that there are a lot of environment variables that are configurable around Haiku. Haiku very much subscribes to the 12 factor methodology, which means that most configuration options are available in the outside world. And in fact, specifically, all admin options for a Haiku instance are settable as defaults from an environment variable. So, for example, um, if we uh, allow sign up is a feature flag that can be set on a per tenant basis. So, I can have one tenant that allows sign up and another tenant that does not. But the default, if I don't go to the setting, is false because of this haiku allow sign up variable setting. So all of our uh, admin uh, options are settable as defaults in this way at the environment level. So you can see there's quite a few here. 
In a recent Haiku release, we renamed almost all of the environment variables to match exactly what Hyrax is using in an effort to, again, reduce the mental overhead and separation between those things. So Hyrax's uh, environment variable set and Haiku's environment, uh, Haiku's environment set is a superset now of Hyrax's environment set. We can specify how many workers we want. We can specify whether we're deploying Fedora, Postgres, and Redis, or whether they're already running. If they're already running, we need to set the host values for those. In our staging and demo setup, we run a single Fedora, a single Postgres, and a single Solar. And so we just point at the existing deployments of those. We don't create a new one for every Haiku app we deploy. Um, so there's a lot of interesting configuration in here. I told you I would explain why we do uh, dollar equals dollar. So msups replaces all of the dollar signs with their environment variable values. The Nginx configuration uses the dollar sign as one of its internal formats for the config. So in order to uh, get around that, we essentially replace this dollar curly bracket, dollar close curly bracket with a single dollar sign as the environment substitution. So it's just a little hack to get around a kind of a uh, lack of features in a um, in msubs as we kind of sub out this file. So this results ultimately in a value file. It's just a simple YAML file that's passed into the Helm chart for deployment. There are a ton of options here, which is why we provide you with a uh, clear set of examples in the Haiku code base. Um, so you can kind of take this and make it your own. All right. There's your whirlwind about deploying. Let's talk about changing Haiku. So many of us have pretty customized Hyrax applications, and we have those features that uh, we desperately wish we had time to commit back, but we often don't. What I want to talk about now is a structure for developing Haiku that can make that easier. I want to commit to working with you to get your code merged. If you have a feature that's generally applicable, put it up as a PR. If it doesn't have enough test coverage or you're embarrassed about this one method, like let's talk about that. Let's have a conversation about how we can get um, things to where they need to be in order to get them merged. Um, and we will try and make it as painless as possible. Um, if it's commonly applicable, but not really everyone's going to want it, then we'll put it behind a feature flag. Let's still get it merged in. Let's still make it part of the code base where we can so that we're not all keeping a separate fork of Haiku for every single application that we're doing. Um, and then if you think the idea is just half-baked or needs a lot of refining, put it up as a draft PR. Let's have conversations about it. Maybe someone on my team needs to build that feature for another project. We'll pick up the work you already started and carry it across the finish line. And then we both get to have a fully refined feature in the future. So we really want to encourage development in the Haiku space itself and not in separate uh, forks wherever possible. And I want to be clear here, we have been pretty guilty of this separate fork problem in the past. And so this is um, some thinking and discussion about ways that we can get away from that on our projects, but also for all of the projects in the community. I think there's a ton of discussion around collaboration. It's always a challenge. I think this is a way to do it. So. Uh, give me your tired, your poor, your, your huddled ideas, your need to breathe free, the refuge refuse of your teaming issue board. Uh, put it up there. I promise you will not be judged. You will be met with kindness and understanding. All right. But what about the things I can't just have generally applicable right now? Themes, work types, and truly custom things that are unique to my platform. Those things exist fundamentally. And so... I want to talk about some methodologies for uh, developing with those things. Um, the other thing that's true is you probably have some customization needed for your deployment. Forking Haiku and customizing it can be difficult to maintain. Merging new versions in becomes hard. You become sort of dead-ended a little bit um, on what you can do to bring in new code and you lose out on some of the community collaboration. So what we're proposing to do is to create an engine that holds any themes, deployment logic, custom work types, or other customizations, and keeps a clear separation of those between the uh, existing Haiku set and custom code. This essentially provides a plugin architecture very similar to how WordPress themes 
and um, like WordPress plugins are deployed. Don't be afraid to have a branch of Haiku where you're working on features. You can push those up. If you don't make a PR for it, no one's probably ever going to notice. So it's not the, um, something you need to necessarily worry about um, other than making sure you don't put any secrets in the code. Um, so that's a, a safe thing that you can do. Um, and then honestly, the fact that we need this structure is a bug to me. I think honest, ultimately, I would like theme packs to be easily installable from a link. I would like uh, work types to be customizable through uploadable schemas. And I think that the more we can drive out uh, the develop deployment logic into variables and a values file, the less we have to have this whole like maintenance of a thing. Um, so it isn't going to be instant to fix those things. The themes are awesome and they're very full featured, but they're not perfect and they don't encompass everything yet. And so, um, and they don't necessarily have an easy like point and click interface for adding a new theme to your hike to a hike tenant. So we're working on that. Selecting a theme that exists, absolutely that's point and click, but actually uploading an external one, that's not there yet. Um, and then work types. At this point, we have Alan's and Flex, which does give you that YAML-based uh, uploading and modification of your work types. There's some work to be done to then bring that up to Valkyrie and merge that in with some of the work that the Surfliner folks have done and that others have done in other projects uh, and get us to a point where we have a nice uh, user interface for maintaining our uh, work schemas and that we're not relying on the sort of built into a class, you have to edit eight or 10 files in order to have working uh, work types that we have today. So we're moving out of that in Hyrax as a whole, but again, we're not there right this minute. So I'm working on a new template for these sorts of projects. It's forthcoming and it needs a name. So right now I'm calling it Haiku Sprouts, um, but I am gonna try and put a poll out uh, actually, let's just start a thread in the Connect channel with name ideas. So this is the engine that sort of wraps around a Haiku install in order to um, kind of be your individual customizations or deployment or theme for that. So uh, ChatGPT and I had a long conversation about it yesterday. My team's been brainstorming some ideas, which I think we'll try and copy over into the thread at this point. Um, but I'd love to get an awesome name for this engine concept. And I want to be clear that I'm ripping this idea off completely from Chris Colivar. Um, this idea of structure, the it comes from the Haiku add-ons repository that Ubiquity maintains. Um, this is 100% the, the method that Chris came up with in his team um, for solving this problem when they realized how separated their Haiku had gotten from the main line. So uh, all credit goes to that team for this idea. Um, and we are looking to adopt the structure also because uh, it's really brilliant. I think that the idea is a powerful one and that it leads to more community collaboration, which I think is super important. Tell me what you think. This is not an idea that is actively uh, being practiced on all of our application deployments yet. We have a lot of haikus running around. Um, and so we want to bring that in together make that a little more uh, maintainable over time, and also make sure that though we work very hard to get as much back into the community as we can to streamline that process and make it as pain-free as possible. All right, unless anyone else has questions, uh, I appreciate your time. <laughs>